So you are here to defeat the worm boss in the Act 4 mission for zombies in Modern Warfare 3. Well in today's video I'm going to show you how to do it solo. Now in this video I am also going to show the build that I am using, the weapon that I am using, and as well as going to talk about in depth on what to use. But before we delve dive into that, let me talk a little bit about what you have to do first. First you have to do is the seals as they ask of you. Now remember every single seal is tethered to a boss. Now what I mean by that is as you can see I activated the toxic um, one first. Here mostly mimics will spawn but in this uh, run not a lot of mimics spawned but there was I think one or two mimics that spawned here. Now you have bosses that correspond to each other right there. As you can see there was a mimic. But in the brain rot one there will be mimics. In the fire one which I am going to show now. Is mostly manglers and hellhounds as well as armored zombies. And then the deadbolt I believe it is. No not deadbolt. The lightning one is going to be for disciples every weakness for every boss correlates to their seal but as you saw i threw a casimir at the red one at the uh, fire pillar because it gets crowded a lot and as you can see here i am searching for a juggernaut on the ground if you want that would be very very helpful but i recommend you go in with only Sentry guns or deadbolt turrets because you have a high chance of spawning the deadbolt turret near the Act 4 worm. But as you can see, I absolutely melted that disciple. Here we go. And we're going to activate Cryo Freeze. Now, Cryo Freeze does not have a specific boss tethered to it. Now, boss is weakened by it, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting, but... I do know that Hellhounds are very affected by it, but here is the build. As well as this is how I look in my inventory. As you can see, it is a lot of self revives. And I have two Deadbolt turrets, which in this run I didn't use as there was no reason to. But here is the build I'm using. Pretty good build. Now I am using the FJB muzzle I believe it is. It is the battle pass muzzle that you got in season 1 reloaded. Then I'm obviously using a 100 round akimbo. As well as a secret little, uh, secret little attachment that will help a lot. A lot of people say oh run this run this but... This, in my opinion, helped. And that is a ammo um, attachment. It is the armor piercing rounds. Now you're probably thinking armor piercing rounds. Are you serious right now? Why? Why would you use that? That is that is uh, not that big of a deal. Well, if you remember, there are armored zombies, and uh, these bullets go right through them. Uh, even with bosses like manglers as well as disciples and it even helps against the worm as the worm also has a lot of armor as you can see i almost instantly melted that mangler obviously i couldn't have proven it as much because i was running the napalm burst but like i said at the beginning Every boss is tethered to their weakness, so obviously a lot of disciples are going to spawn here at the lightning one. There are a lot of manglers that would spawn near the uh, inferno one, the napalm burst ammo mod pillar. And then the cryo freeze one doesn't have any boss weakened to it. And uh, then the brain rod ammo mod pillar is tethered to a mimic. Now here I'm just killing a lot of disciples outside and my dog is mostly clearing up everything on the outside as well. So this one will take a little bit more time but what I would recommend is you go in with a lot of cells, pack three obviously and then legendary ether tool 
and then what you want to do is you want to go in with this build that I am using it just helps a lot I will show you what I'm doing now against the worm but what you also want to do is if you have it go and run golden armor plates as those help a lot as well as a dog the dog is mostly just for distraction with the worm instead of helping you now I have to say I mostly ran on the beach side which you don't want to do but once you are done with the last pillar here I was about to just use the scorcher but there was a rift now this rift always spawns here which is a pretty good thing if you don't have the scorcher so as you can see it takes me instantly over there there I spawn it in and right here is where the deadpool turb would be but it didn't really spawn here I don't know where it spawned but here I am just hitting him a little bit and as you can see a sliver of his health is already gone and he just spawned now he did go underground here which I was very sad about he sped out one of his orbs and right here I'm going to show you there I am aiming at the purplish parts of him now I do miss a lot of shots here but as you can see in the top his health is being melted away so so quickly here I'm placing down the sentry and running away but just remember, if you are about to be eaten, there's some kind of glitch that happens with akimbo weapons where it, it just it just changes things. Like, look, there, when every time you were, are about to be eaten, your screen turns dark. But with akimbos, it just stays there instead of going away. But the reason that happens is um, unknown. But you could let that go away if you just switched weapons and switch back. But as you can see, I am totally melting this boss. Now the reason why I said run armor piercing round is you usually hit the weakness at the purple parts. But if you haven't noticed, the purple areas, if I could say that, are also armor for the worm itself. It is not some kind of flesh or anything. That counts as armor as well. So what you want to do is you want to shoot that with your armor piercing rounds which will increase the damage by double the amount as you can see right here i keep going on the beach as to um, keep the worm at the surface because it keeps going down and uh, that will not help a lot because once he's down in the ground you will gain a lot of health back and that is not good but if you keep on running and he rushes towards you, just keep running left or right as you will stand a better chance not to get eaten and spat out by the worm itself. But this is the best weapon still, even after it got nerfed. This is the best build I can give you. Almost no recoil. There isn't actually any recoil. 200 bullets in the chamber and then a lot more perks towards it as i said the armor piercing rounds are one of the best things to use against the worm as that purple part also counts as armor so even though you you're breaking armor that purple is still armor itself so armor piercing rounds just do double the amount of damage and then what you also want to go in with is I would recommend you go in with Healing Aura. Now I didn't go in with Healing Aura, I went with Tesla Storm because there are a lot of great things to use Tesla Storm for. But I just find it better to use Healing Aura as that also heals your Hellhound. And it gains a lot of health back as well as you gaining health back if you're very low. And even if the you don't have golden armor plates, healing aura just helps you out a lot. Even if you're low health, you can just pop that bad boy and then you can just hit it up, you know. But right here is where I take Graham Long down. As you can see, it is absolutely melting him. There we go. There he died. And I did a little nice little spin there because I've been struggling with this solo for the longest of times. 
And I know for a fact as soon as I, I told myself as soon as I defeated Solo, as you can see, I still have all of my um, self revives left. So I came over prepared, but I just knew I had to make a video on this as a lot of people are still struggling, even to this day, even after watching a lot of videos. But this is the best tips I can give you. Go in with a bunch of selfs. Go in with a juggernaut or with a sentry gun. Go in with a hellhound. Tier 3 hopefully. And then go in with golden armor, armor plates if you have it. Flawless ethereum crystal. And legendary ether tool. Hope this video helped and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.